Okay, so today on Tree Talk, we are going to talk about uh, Christmas fern. So Christmas fern, Polystichum acrostichoides, uh, one of the most common ferns that we have in our eastern forests. Uh, really likes mature forest stands. Uh, part of that is because it likes the shade, which creates moist conditions on this forest floor. Uh, most ferns need those moist conditions to survive, uh, but also to reproduce. Uh, they don't reproduce by seed, they reproduce by spore. One of the oldest ways um, of uh, sexual reproduction that we have in our world, actually. Um, so mosses will, will reproduce by spores, um, fungi kind of do, uh, and, and ferns do. Um, and so uh, these uh, adults that you see here are actually um, different genetically than, uh, it takes two generations uh, to fulfill the, the reproductive cycle for ferns. So these are called sporophytes, um, which is the kind of the adult generation. Um, and then we have gametophytes, um, which is basically the analog of if our eggs and sperm, instead of staying within our bodies, um, were kind of just outside our bodies, living their own lives, and then found each other, you know, out in the environment. Um, that's essentially the, the way that, that uh, fern reproduction works. So um, once the spores are released, and spores are typically held on the underside of fronds um, of the sporophyte generation, um, once they're released, they land, they grow, um, and then they reproduce um, uh, on the forest floor uh, with another gametophyte um, to then create the mature generation. Um, and so that's why we need those moist conditions, we need the forest cover for them. Um, unlike other fern species, uh, the Christmas fern kind of grows in clusters, so it's very different than some of our ferns which, can, which are native, uh, but can cause some issues for forest regeneration. So in particular, I'm referring to hay-scented fern and New York fern, uh, both of which will form thickets. So when there's uh, an overabundance of deer, um, and they're eating everything on the forest floor except for uh, those fern species um, and other invasive species like multiflora rose, barberry, things like that. Um, what you get is you get no oaks, hickories, tulip poplars, etc. regenerating in the understory. You just get thickets of these ferns. So this here is hay-scented fern um, and it's distinctive because uh, it, we say it is, it is uh, triply dissected. So. Um, the main uh, stipe is, is what the stem of a fern is called, goes up there, and then we have another one coming across there, and then another way dissected coming to create that little leaflet there. Uh, and we can compare that to our Christmas fern where we just go up and out. So singly dissected Christmas fern. Um, so our Christmas fern, uh, while I have it up here, uh, the, the way to tell, it, it looks very distinctive. Um, these kind of thick, leathery looking, glossy, darker green leaves. Um, but you can see each of these leaflets sort of looks like a stocking. So there, have Merry Christmas fern to you. Um, other people say looks like Santa's sleigh. Either way, uh, very, very distinctive leaflet. Um, we also have some serrations on the side. Um, and then when you flip it over, we get these sort of reddish hairs on the underside. And this is where the spores would be uh, lined up once it's ready to reproduce. Um, the uh, reproductive we have uh, with, with mature sporophyte generation, some of the fronds are not going to be spore bearing and some are. The spore bearing ones are called fertile fronds. The non spore bearing ones are called uh, sterile fronds. Um, the sterile fronds will just fall down and get covered up by snow and stuff over the winter. The fertile fronds um, will stay standing up um, so, uh, uh, so they can release their spores a little bit later. Um, the reason why it's called Christmas fern is not because of that, uh, that stocking or sleigh shaped uh, leaflet, um, but because they stay green throughout the winter months. Um, so you'll see them through January, really, um, but they kind of look best going into the holiday season uh, because snow hasn't had a chance to kind of squish them and trample them down yet. Um, as far as benefits to our forest, nice little diversity. Uh, there are some uh, insect species that, that only eat um, this species, uh, but uh, supposedly the very, very important uh, food source for rough grouse. Um, other things will eat them too. Deer will browse on them a little bit, but um, for rough grouse, there's really nothing um, that sticks out of the snow for them to eat uh, through the winter, except for Christmas fern and a, and a few other things. So important food source for them. Um, but there we go, Polystichum acrostichoides, our first fern that we've covered here on Tree Talk. Um, so have a happy holiday season um, and uh, Merry Christmas fern to you. And we'll see you in 2020.